Well, what do you know? It's another Sunday morning, and here we are back again with Jack Milne, the House Whisperer on WWDB Talk 860. Stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement, featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne, who tells us that every house has a story. I'm Barry Reisman, and welcome, Jack Milne, back to the airwaves. Well, thank you, Barry. It's always good to be here. I was just looking up on the calendar, and here November 2nd is going to be Daylight Savings Time. And, oh, boy. Uh, I, it's not my topic for today, but I think on that Sunday, I'd like to bring my electrician in Glenn Ost and uh, talk about light bulbs. Uh, because before you know it, these things are going to start burning a lot longer than they have during our summer months. After daylight savings time this kicks in, Barry, I look forward to December 22nd because I know that that's the shortest day of the year. And then after that, I get my little stretches of sunshine, you know, every night just a little bit more and a little bit more. I know what you mean. Uh, you know, uh, so hibernation is a time for, you know, family gatherings and holidays. And before you know it, they're going to be upon us. So, well, today's topic is um, called egress. What does it mean, and how does it apply to me? Uh, because at one time, at one point, it may actually save your family's life. So I'm really going to ask that you listen in because today is a, a really important topic. But before we kick in, I'd like to thank Bucksmont Inspections uh, for helping me stay on the on the air every week, and of course, all these folks do. So reach out to Rob Bowie. I'm going to give um, websites today. Get to know them. Get to know the backgrounds, and if you need them, they're just all fantastic vendors. So Buxmont Inspections, BuxmontInspections.com, very simple. Burrow Exterminating, uh, their website is, again, simple enough, BurrowExterminating.com. BrainFlushGear.com, you can't get any simpler than that one. It's, a one it's, a, it's the name of their company, it's the name of their website, and you can always email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. Pest Blaster, Radon Testing, Mold Testing, Wood Destroying Insect Inspections, Pest Removal. And again, I'm really stressing that pest removal because this is the time of year uh, that the squirrels are gathering their nuts and other creatures are trying to find their way in for the winter. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears open. If you need any help, be it as simple as mouse traps uh, to a big raccoon or a groundhog, um, you know, reach out to these folks at uh, pestblaster.com. Of course, if you need uh, good quality home inspections, reach out to Tri-County Inspection Company. Uh, we do do it all from historical properties, investment properties, shopping centers, churches. I, I think I've been in everything. But, uh, and of course, it's simple residential inspections for buyers and sellers. Uh, so visit our website at tcinspect.com. Uh, I've got five gentlemen that are happy to help you out and a full-time staff to answer all your questions. So uh, visit the website, give us a call, and we're here for you. So um, let's jump into the email box just real quick. Uh, Joe from Haddonfield. I heard your show about hot tubs a few weeks ago, and I thought, yuck. Oh, wow, well, I haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to do this. Uh, your show talked me, or uh, taught me a lot about bacteria. Um, I don't know if it's worth the investment, but my wife is on the war path. Oh. Um, a little clarity, please. Well, Joe, thanks for your thoughts. Hot tubs and pools, bottom line, require almost daily maintenance uh, by checking the temperature and the chemicals. And tubs are just small pools. And like all pools, if you stay up on top of the maintenance as I do, there's really never an issue. But like every new toy, sometimes the luster wears out after a while. And like everything else that we may own in our lifetime, if we don't maintain the possessions that we have and know how it truly functions, uh, they all will fall into disrepair. Um, so as to your wife on the war path, I can't help you with that, but I would suggest you go shopping. Uh, learn everything you can about the tub, all the options that are available, and then you can both make an educated decision and then sit back and relax. So, folks, any questions, please feel free to email me at thehousewhispereshow at gmail.com or visit previous shows uh, at thehousewhispereshow.com. Um, and, of course, podcasts, I love that one, at wwdbam.com, and that's available 24-7. 
So let's get started. Today's topic, egress, what does it mean and how can it apply to me? So the definition of egress is the action of going out or leaving a place. And that's becoming more and more important in our building codes, primarily, folks, for fire safety. And we want to make sure that if there's ever, ever a circumstance in someone's home, that time is limited. And you may not have very many options if the front door is blocked. Uh, and, you know, uh, air generates larger fires. Uh, so sometimes you may not be able to use the front door. So windows become your next option. So first off, egress is a measurement of 5.7 square feet of an opening in your home. And that 5.7 square feet is large enough to get you and your family out of a home, again, in case of a fire. It's simple math. If you measure the top and one side of your current window opening, do the calculation, and if it falls under the 5.7 square feet requirement, you should really consider upgrading the windows, um, and, and, and in particular, the bedrooms. Um, to give you a, a rough measurement, 5.7 square feet is roughly a three foot wide window by five foot tall. Okay, so I want to plant I want to plant that image in your brain. So we do a lot of homes in the Bucks County area, and I always think of Levittown windows. And there's also many split levels that were built more than 50 years ago that have sliding windows. Um, and you know, even on a good day, if you could give somebody a boost, you still can't get out of that window opening. And it's sometimes, you know, that opening is four to five feet off the floor. Because if the window is mounted under the header, which is towards the top of your ceiling, that's usually a 2 by 10 or 2 by 12. So if the window is only 14 inches tall, but maybe 4 feet wide, um, you may not be able to get out because it's too high off the floor. So um, what thing's nice, and I, when I do all my inspections, when I find this type of window, is I tell my clients, don't go wide, go down. So in other words, the header's already there to support the existing window. It's already high enough uh, to um, against the ceiling line, and so it's easy enough just to go down and make the window larger. Um, now, fires are rare, uh, but they can happen. Now, again, as I mentioned, sliders tend to be high off the floor, um, and, and it's almost impossible to crawl out. But as I always hear from clients, you know, Jack, I'm going to throw a chair or other pieces of furniture to get out. And, you know, we, we may all not be Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, but uh, in the bottom line, you know, the, the, dis, the, the difference between life and death in a fire can be as short as 30 minutes. So... Um, if it's too small and it's too narrow, the other thing to think about is that a firefighter may not be able to make their way in. Now, windows are really cheap and easy to install. And, and like I just said, it's easy to go down, but don't go wide, okay? Now, for contractors to do that, um, all they have to do is take out the existing window and they take out the sill and they remove um, and replace what we call the jack stud, not named after me, to enlarge the opening. Then they, re then they reinstall the sill. So not only will a larger window um, allow more light, and, but it also allows more air into the room. So it's really a win-win. Um, if your home allows, consider a second window in a room where maybe only one exists now. Now, what we call the gable end of a home, um, has, which is the side of your house, typically not the front and rear, depending on bearing points, um, but a gable, wind, a gable wall has no bearing points. So a window uh, can easily be added. And I never really understood why a freestanding home that is not attached to another has no windows on the sides of the house. Now. Even if you don't need egress windows, my suggestion is open the house up. 
get the light in, get those cross breezes going, because there's nothing better. And it really will, and at the bottom line, also drop your air conditioning costs. So, Barry, why don't we take a break right here? Uh, let's listen to our sponsors once again, because after Windows, I'm going to take you deep into the bowels of your home, the area called the basement. Uh, I'm ready to go into the basement with you, Jack. So we'll okay, take Okay, <laughs> well, you push the buttons, and folks, we'll be right back. All right, I'm going to push this button right here, and Jack will be back right after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide a rate on testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainPlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainPlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-66. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months, looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back! Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. We're back once again. Jack Mill and the House Whisperer here at WWDB talking about a fascinating topic today. As usual, Jack, we'll let you pick up where you left off. 
Well, thank you, Barry. Yes, today's topic is uh, about the term egress. And again, I pulled this off of Google so I could be explicitly correct when it says the action of going out or leaving a place. So the first part of the show talked about windows. And again, estimates are free, folks. Take full advantage of that. And the one thing that new windows will do is drop your operating costs, and especially if you have wood windows and especially if you have old aluminum windows, please do me a favor and get rid of them. Uh, they're leaking. They sweat. They're just garbage. So consider getting new windows. You don't always have to buy them all at once, but have the contractor measure once so that this way you can measure them as you need them and put them in, especially on your cold uh, sides of the home or where you recreate. So let's get off the topic of windows. Let's head downstairs. Um, and I like to say I'm going subterranean or the basement. So, again, today's topic is egress, a fancy name for a, an opening large enough to escape in case of a fire. In 2008, the codes have changed regarding finished basements. So a second fire exit, be it a bilco door or a foundation window, is now required. And, you know, as, as you may be away f uh, from... Uh, the episodes on building a better basement part one and part two as they were done a few weeks ago um, I was I, I had discussed um, over the last week or so um, with my contractor Ken Newdecker from Newdecker Construction about cost estimates uh, for these Bilco and uh, foundation window egress points. If you have any questions, folks, and, and thinking about a, a new basement, reach out to Ken at 215-443-9200. So last week, we talked about the benefits and detriments um, of, um, of finishing basements, but, um, but at the same time, you know, both types of, of fire safety uh, are going to be required, um, and and you will need to pull a permit uh, for a finished basement. Um, now, you may be grandfathered in if your house is older, but as of 2012, um, you will need a, a second means of egress. Now, from talking to Ken, he said he had finished a basement about four months ago without having to do egress re requirements because the home had a sprinkler system uh, within the confines of the basement. So the moral of this is please check all codes, uh, you know, especially locally, and verify um, you know, that you need them or don't need them. But if you have a sprinkler system, you may not. Most homes don't. So um, through Ken, a foundation window installed may run between $3,500 to $4,000, depending on location and complexity. Um, it takes a little bit more than a day to install uh, either a foundation window and or a Bilco door. Now, we also tend to call them butterfly doors because they both open from the sides. Um, and Bilco doors run roughly between five and $6,000. Um, but again, the time frame for installation is, is roughly the same. Uh, again, permits will need to be submitted and approved for either application. Um, with both uh, be between the options, personally, I prefer the Bilco door. Uh, because it does allow for entry of larger items. Um, so when you finish that basement, the sofa or the pool table, but it also allows the removal of large appliances. Say you have to replace the furnace or a water heater, um, or you're, you're extracting that oil tank because you have thought of another way of heating your home. Foundation windows will allow light, uh, but can also become a hiding spot for an intruder. So. Uh, again, if, if there are only one of these two options, then I would take the Bilco door. Another option, if your property allows, is a walkout basement door. Now, uh, most of these homes have what I call a half basement. So in other words, the front of the home is embedded in the soil. But as you walk around the house and you walk downhill, well, the back of your home uh, is really exposed from the grade up to the, where your first floor starts, which can be 12 to 15 feet. Um, so this way, the, the lower
lower level will have windows, and it typically will have a sliding door um, and or a what we call an atrium door uh, where half is fixed and half swings in. So a lot of times this type of entry uh, would have to be installed while the house is being constructed, uh, primarily due to slope of land and backfilling purposes. So a ground drain would then have to be installed because it's almost like a precast stairway. So when you open up this door, you walk out, you're going to land on a concrete pad with a ground drain. And that ground drain should be tied into your sump pump uh, and pit. So um, if you talk to an excavator, and this type of system can be installed, which is roughly 10 to 12 steps, um, you're looking at around eight to ten thousand uh, dollars for that type of entry, but it really doesn't make um, a basement feel um, subterranean. It, it makes your basement feel like a level, and so usually with the homes that I see this, this type of, uh, of egress. They have the bar downstairs. It's the family room. It's the man cave. Sometimes it's a bedroom. Uh, but you know, as I'm saying this, I'm wagging my finger because I really do not like bedrooms uh, in basements, primarily because you may be dealing with fossil fuels or propane uh, that can give off carbon monoxide. So I always tell people with finished basements, you know, play all night, but go to bed upstairs. So I, I think that walkout to me is what I would call the Cadillac of egress entryways uh, because you're going to be involved with not only the cost of the precast system, but you also have to pay for excavation, the cutting of the foundation, creating the entryway, and the finish. So as I mentioned, location and placement is critical, and, and this can take time. Um, these walkouts are typically about 10 uh, feet side to side and can take as much as 12 to 15 feet away from the back of your home. I hope I said that right and I hope it's clear, but it takes up a sizable amount of your backyard if you're limited. Uh, railings should always be installed for safety purposes. And if you're going to go this direction, you have to keep that ground drain clear at all times. Uh, because if it backs up, typically the gap between your walkout and the door, the threshold of your door may be as little as one to three inches. Uh, so if that ground drain backs up, you're going to have water intrusion. Now, maybe for a little bit less cost is what I call a side entryway. Now, a side entryway is where you literally walk down the steps very close to your house wall. Now, again, it's going to in, in, include excavating. It's going to include the construction of, a, uh, of a, either a poured foundation wall or a concrete block wall. And I think you know, this is associated with older homes where you can walk downstairs uh, with a railing and turn right or turn left and go through a, uh, a, a three-foot entry steel door. And... I think that would cost less than the Cadillac, of which I just mentioned. Um, but again, it must, must, must have a ground drain at the bottom of the landing. Um, sometimes they have to be covered, especially if that ground drain just goes to a bed of stone, which I do not recommend at all. And even if it does cost a few more bucks, uh, I would make sure that your mason uh, ties that ground drain into your sump pit. Um, so that you have a pump that's working on your behalf and that, empty, that area stays as dry as possible. In closing, egress is a fairly new word in the construction world. Egress was first required beginning in the 1980s. And if you were planning to reside your home, you know, back then, let's say your house was built in the 60s, you had the aluminum siding, now you wanted to switch over to vinyl, and permits were issued, egress windows uh, would need to be installed at that time in certain municipalities. Where I lived, my, my neighbor just put brand new windows in 
the neighbor had to put in egress windows, but the neighbor said, the, the township said, as long as you put fire alarms uh, with electric backup, electrically powered, but battery backup, excuse me, on each level of your home, then we will not require you to put in egress windows. And he chose that second option. If egress windows, again, you focus primarily on the bedroom level of your home. Fire safety to your family and, and home should n never be taken lightly. And with today's engineered homes, uh, most burn down completely, completely uh, within an hour. And the reason for that is that the trusses that they're using today are what we call either open web trusses where a flame can envelop them, they heat up the gusset plates and they cause collapse, or your engineered eye trusses, which is 100% kiln-dried lumber, think of kindling, so that you don't get creaks upstairs. Uh, but the webbing is only three-eighths, maybe a half-inch thick at most, and they're held together with laminated rails. So regardless of the size of the home, and regardless of the type of home, when I'm on my home inspections, I make sure my clients get replacement value so that in case that house ends up in that new finished basement, you always have the funds uh, to rebuild. You know, we all live in homes. I, I want to plant the seed. I want to get people thinking about their, their health, their welfare, their safety. And a lot of these things don't cost much. And, and again, my biggest concern today are the new engineered homes because within an hour, uh, the house is, is, has collapsed. Wow. It's not a lot of time. Uh, so in closing, as it's getting dark earlier, run some fire safety drills with your kids. Be sure you know where you're going to go in case of a fire. Think of your family, of course, um, and be, believe me, in a fire, you're not walking out. You're crawling to the wall. You're crawling to the window. You're crawling to the door. On a better note, as it is Sunday, <laughs> please spend time with friends and family, and I look forward to talking to you next week on The House. Hey, Jack, thanks a lot for another great show. Always great. Tune in again next week for another edition of The House Whisperer Show with professional Home Inspector Jack Mill. Now, you can listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. Oh, no.